Most bankers aren't ready to help you until after their third cup of coffee. But with Central National Bank's after-hours service, you don't have to wait for the bank lobby to open to get help. You can contact us from 6 to 8.30 in the morning or from 5 to 10 in the evening, and we'll connect you to a real, live, local person who can answer questions and fix problems seven days a week. Bank different. Bank central. Central National Bank. Member FDIC. Hey there, welcome to Wah. Wah. King of the Hill Rewatch Podcast. I'm Mike. And I'm Rusty. Rusty, we got a guest. Yeah, we have a guest today. Very special a, Friday uh, guest. A ber- very special Friday guest. Yep. Uh, Dominic Lovins, a uh, content creator uh, from LA, I wanna, also a candle I, maker. I want to say her name in my my best radio voice impression. Okay, let's see it. Dominique Lovings. There you go. How about that? I like it. Huh? You like that? That, was, that, warm. Good? that yeah. was warm. It was warm. It was very warm. <laughs> Dominique, very we hear warm. you. Yeah. How are you? Yeah, welcome. I am well. I am so excited to be here. This is like, you have no idea. Like, I am so, so excited. <laughs> well, thank you. Yeah, we're thank glad you. to have you. I'm, you know, I'm glad that uh, my shameless self-promoting on Twitter is actually, uh, it's actually working and paying he, off. He is a shameless self-promoter. I know that. And I, I do. I, I, I promote on OnlyFans yeah. uh, creator <laughs> stuff, you know. That's great. Uh, well, I, I, I'll promote anywhere. So, Dominique, let's talk about you just real quick before yeah. we get into the uh, King of the Hill talk. Uh, tell us okay. about you, where you live, what you do, and uh, let's start talking about you. Okay, so I am originally from St. Louis, so you get a little bit of the country twang. Uh, um, I've lived it. in I've lived in St. Louis, uh, LA, for the past twelve years. Um, okay. So you know, I have a degree in broadcast journalism and public relations. Oh wow! Um, yeah, so I moved to LA to get into entertainment journalism, yeah. but I, life has taken its many turns, <laughs> and now I'm here. <laughs> well, absolutely, I feel you know, that creating. Creating content. Um, I have a candle line that I started during lockdown, and I also have a podcast uh, called cool. Whiskey Soured Libations and Conversations. Oh, I love that. Oh, that's name. awesome. So, yeah, that's a great name. Yeah, thank you. So, just having a good time, um, cranking out episodes every week. Um, I have a lot of guests every week. I have a rotating guest chair. Mm-hmm. So, we'll talk about, you know, like different things. You know, I've had, um, a lot of comics on, we talk about their beginnings and we allow the, the conversation to take over, mm. over a libation. So no. yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. That sounds great. Yeah. Yeah, I've watched a couple episodes. It, I really liked it. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm very loud, outspoken, <laughs> kind of funny. Uh, you know, <laughs> you know so Dominique, I, I always, I always uh, describe my wife, you know, there's a lot of people that know her because she's in education. And so, here locally, whenever they say, "Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah," and they they're they're thinking about her, I say, "Oh, she's the really tall, loud, blonde woman." And so, you know, she she's <laughs> she's in your club. Yes, <laughs> you know, uh, I I've come to figure out possibly that I am very loud because I just learned that I cannot hear. <laughs> oh, oh no! Like oh, okay. So, so like there are certain things happening. So I was like, oh, maybe that's why I'm like always laugh. <laughs> yeah. Never, never, never even crossed my mind. Now it all so, makes sense. So what do you what do you mean you can't hear? Tell me about that. 
Yo, so I've had sinus issues um, for the past like three years, yeah. and um, I have been to one ENT. Um, they took a candle up my not a candle. Oh my god, <laughs> I was just making candles. They took a camera up that's my a, nasal. That, that's <laughs> a, that's a great transition. Let's talk about candles up your nose. Oh my gosh, yeah. they took a camera up my passageways, mm-hmm. and I don't have a deviated septum, and so I'm like, but well, what's going on? And they were like, oh, you just have small, like, passageways. I'm Mm -hmm. like, okay. So I went to get a second opinion, and this place decided to do a hearing test. Right. And the lady came on in the middle of the hearing test and asked, hey, did you have hearing aids growing up? Oh, wow. No. Oh, and she's wow. like, I've been clicking the button, and you haven't been pressing the button to let me know that you can hear. I'm like, oh my god! <laughs> Is it? It was it like that that uh, test they give you in elementary school where you have to raise your hand whenever you hear the beep? Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. but it, so you just get a button to click when yeah. you every sound that you hear, and apparently. I, am, I was really bad. Yeah, I couldn't hear shit. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm right there with you, Dominique. Uh, I, I think that there's like sirens going off around me all the time. I've got tinnitus so bad. But uh, so what I did is I got into podcasting. I thought that was a good idea. Okay. Well, yeah. here we are. I, I, <laughs> right. I, I was like, I have to use this degree some sort of way. So yeah. here we are. I, I step into this world. Yeah, I'm just trying to avoid having to do uh, like an honest day's work uh, again in my life. That's why I started podcasting. <laughs> And uh, so far, it uh, uh, it's still dishonest work every day. Yeah, yeah it's, right. it's not getting me anywhere yet. But you know, uh, through it it, well through all these it connections and stuff, we've done really good. I'm not gonna it's, lie, we've done really good for only being a podcast for eight months. We've we've we I think we've passed now. I think we just hit our fourteen thousand download mark good. for the for for like the last eight months. We've gotten over fourteen thousand downloads yeah. with uh, like one point six k unique listeners over the last like three wow. weeks so it's definitely yeah, moving in a great well. direction and, so and it's yeah. and it's just the marketing thing really so dominique let's talk about your candles uh, yeah i'm really okay, interested cool. in your candles so before okay. before we introduce your candles yeah i'm gonna go ahead and announce uh the oh uh, yeah the affi- do. we have, we're yeah. we're doing a uh we're doing official sponsorship with the candles and uh, we're gonna Yay. get we're gonna get one each of her candles to try here on, on the Angeles. podcast. So on our uh, episodic content at the beginning of our episodic content, as soon as we get the candles, guys, so yeah. so bear with us. We're going to light one and describe the candle before we start every episode uh, for the for however many candles the line has. I, and I, uh, I for I'm one excited. I for one cannot wait for this room to smell better. Yeah, it just, I don't know, it smells very cl- clinical. It feels it's like very, a clinic in here. It is very clinical. It's very clinical. Yeah. It's like oddly like yeah. sanitary. It's like it's like ghost sense of podcasters gone by, you know? Yeah, I mean? like they, yeah it feels like oh you've come through here. Okay, so let's talk about St. Angeles, uh, your uh, your candle line. Uh, tell me about yeah. tell me about these names because uh, they have some very uh, specific names. Yeah, so St. Angeles is actually uh, my brand, right? So um, I used to um, go as like another name. And then as I was trying to, you know, bridge certain gaps, you're like wanting to appeal to men and women. I'm like, this is a solid enough name where I can gain attention from, you know, like both sexes, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Or however you identify identify sure and so um under that i was trying to i've I've worked in sales uh my entire life and i love candles and i spend so much money on them i was like there has to be a way that i can create my own line and so initially i did it private label um meaning that pretty much i paid for it to be produced sure i didn't have to do any of the shipping or anything like that i went through a third party Mm -hmm. Um, so that was cool. And then um, I figured, hey, I could cut out the middleman and take all my profits That's it. myself. Yeah, no, absolutely. And I learned how to make candles myself. Um, so that's how I got there. But the the names under each, you know, each candle has a different name. Mm-hmm. And it relates to um, friends. Right. I'm super obsessed with Paris. Um, I actually just okay. went in April. Oh, wow. A Franco file. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so I just went in April. It had been some years since I had gone previously. Um, 
so I was just thinking of certain different places that I love in France. Mm -hmm. And um, like Republic is an area that I stayed in before yeah. uh, with my sister. And so that's how I got the, the idea. And I was like, I want to pay you know, homage to like my favorite place in the world. Yeah. Um, and that's how I got it. So I come up with different names. Like we have Moulin Rouge. It's very, the, that scent is very colorful. It has notes of like. Remember these words and, when we're describing it. Colorful. Mm -hmm. Colorful. Yeah, remember these words. Notes. <laughs> Paris. <laughs> got it. <laughs> so yeah, that's how I came up with the brand. And like even St. Angeles. St. Angeles is. I'm from St. Louis, so I feel like St. Louis is mm -hmm. where I was born, but my soul was here in Los Angeles. Oh, so cool. I fused the two together. So what a there great, we go. Yeah, that's a great name. That's, awesome. that's a great name. Especially yeah, I, like I, Thank I, I like I like anything like that that has a story behind it, you know, and so it, it yeah. makes me Yeah, it just kinda kinda makes me think um uh, homey. You know, uh, people have a story that sort of I, it just it just feels better yeah, when and, it has something behind it. And, like and that. going back to our partnership, that's one of the things that me and Mike are really excited about with our podcast is the ability to have small businesses involved because, yeah. yeah. uh, you know, it's one thing to have a national advertiser that everybody has. Ballsy. It's another thing to have you know, local creators or even people who aren't local, just small businesses and, and, and content right. creators be yeah. a part of the show. Yeah. And, and that's why we try to look for King of the Hill uh, fans or uh, even King of the Hill content creators and stuff like that. I don't know. It's just, uh, it's just fun to me to be able to do this stuff. So I really, really, uh, really enjoy it. So and, uh, Dominique, let's, let's talk about your tie to yeah, King of the Hill. That's what, that's what I'm most curious about. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, you know, I just want to say again, I appreciate you guys like sending me the tweets, oh, and I was so excited. I thought, it's no way, it's no way. And <laughs> I was telling my cousin, um, I was gonna hit her up, and I was like, we should have like a rewatch because we talk about everything King of the Hill, oh, yeah, and yeah, yeah. she even has like that's a great. wind chime and shorts and all these different things. Oh, that's and awesome. we had a, a, a Hank Hill as the cover of uh, Kendrick Lamar's damn album. Oh, and it says day. Yeah. day. Dang, so yeah, like we, Dang. and so when you hit me, I was like, we don't have to do this. They already have one. Let's listen to it. It's wonderful. So that's awesome. I, I am, so excited to be here. Yeah, I it's great, literally Dominic. love King Well, what I do is is I go to Twitter and I search King of the Hill for mentions. And yes. every mention, and I'll sit there for like an hour and do this, and I'll scroll down on every mention and let everybody know that there's a King of the Hill podcast. Because a lot of it's people so are unaware of the fact that anything like this exists. Yeah. And some of the people that we've got that are fans have watched, like there's a particular guy named Artie, shout out to Artie. Artie. He has watched and listened to every other King of the Hill podcast in existence <laughs> and didn't like any of them yeah. and found his way to ours in this, in this quest for uh, King of the Hill content. So I don't know. It's just been really cool to be able to interact with people like you and fans of King of the Hill. It's, it's a conversation I always love having because you, you you see how universal the humor is once mm. you start seeing yeah. the fan base. Like the fan base has really shocked me uh, more than more than any fan base I think for for anything because you think that uh, a lot of Hank's fans are going to be you know conservative guys you know conservative yeah. males but it's not it's, it's not. so broad it's unbelievable yeah. I see I see like. Uh, blue haired leftists that love it. And then there's the, the red hat, white shirt magas that are loving it too. It's just so huge of a range because it's such a universal show. So where does that universality like bring you in the King of the Hill? You know, um, growing up, I grew up in the city. I'm from the West side of St. Louis. So okay. we grew up, we didn't have, my mom didn't believe in paying for cable. Yeah. So yeah, we sure. had like the seven, the seven channels. So, and we grew up watching the Simpsons. A lot of kids, you know, in my age bracket growing up were really shocked that my mom <laughs> let us watch the Simpsons. Yeah. They were like, it's very, that's a very adult show. Yeah. It, yeah. Yeah. It was, it was funny to us. So, you know, so before, you know, uh, the Simpsons would come on when uh, the King of the Hill would come on, you know? So right. it was like you're, that 6.30 You're in the Central, block. right? You're in the Central time? Yeah, or? I'm yeah. Central, Central yeah. time. So 
it just, I don't know what happened. I just came, became like obsessed with this show. And it was also honestly very relatable. You know, even now, like looking back at like the episodes, it's so many different things that have happened, even in my friendship circle that I can say, oh my God, this is like a King of the Hill episode. Like I, I tweeted last night, even Atlanta did an episode on FX where they're looking for the snipe. And oh, I'm wow. like, yeah, I saw that. Yeah. yeah. And so I'm like, wow, this is really giving me King of the Hill vibes. So I, I, I don't know. That's just my life. Like everything. That's awesome. Yeah. King I was scrolling, I was scrolling, <laughs> scrolling through doing my shameless self promotion last night. And I saw that on there and I almost, I was like, Oh, okay. Let me, I already know this person. So I don't, I don't have to send it. <laughs> and I do that sometimes I had, I had one person, they messaged me were like, yeah, you sent this like three times to me. Can you please stop commenting <laughs> about your podcast? I was like, oh, my bad. No, did you, did, but did you listen to the podcast? I'm yeah, did you listen to it? Did you listen to it? <laughs> so, so, Dominique, I'm going to issue a, uh, a challenge to you. Um, okay. I need a King of the Hill scented candle. Oh, my gosh. What does that have to smell like? I have I, just so I don't much know. pressure. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. I just need uh, uh, before we before we get off this call. I just want you to be thinking about it. Let's. Uh, well, well, what we what we could do with that then is that could be ideas. that could be our official partnership Ooh, yeah. as a a a bois candle, and uh, I think that would be cool. I think that would be awesome if you could just. I okay. would I would love to see what the scent would be. Honestly, okay. A scooch that man. would okay. like what is it? Would it smell like? It smells like a scooch propane. Man. Like no, God like, no. Like, Propane no, I would think of like lemongrass. Oh, lemongrass. Okay, lemongrass and something like right. maybe. Um, Alabama. Like, yeah, like lip. Yeah, like okay. So maybe mm. I don't I, now. I have a whiskey um, or yeah. leather. Yeah. Okay. And I used to have a scent called Whiskey Rue that was very, you know, like masculine. Mm. Um, mm. So I, I would have to play around with it. But if I come, when I come up with it, I'll send yeah, it to you, you right know. away. You let us yeah, know. we're yeah. excited here. I'm not it. even gonna let you know. I'm just gonna send oh, it. Okay, I love awesome. That. I like that sense too. Of, yeah, sense yeah, of Arlen. Yeah. The yeah, sense of a little, a little bit of Arlen. Yeah, <laughs> that could be a whole line. The the sense sense of Arlen. That's the right. sense from Arlen. Yeah. Uh, Maybe do like a library book thing. Yeah, and then you could do like a popcorn, <laughs> like 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 a movie theater, or whatever, like the Arlen movie theater, like a popcorn smell, yeah. or a steakhouse. Yeah, house. that's hilarious. I don't know how in the hell you'd get a meat smell. <laughs> I, know I don't know. That could go. That could be like smoked really meat. Like a that could be gross. Yeah. That could like be a brisket. Yeah. Like yeah. it would have to be. Now that would definitely have that leather in it. Yeah. Oh, I try to fight all through the night, deep in the heart of Texas. So let's yeah. let's now talk about whiskey soured. Um, okay. Give me give me kind of the elevator pitch on uh, on this show. And then, uh, and then I want to just kind of talk about it. Okay. Um, whiskey sour, pretty much, um, it's really that simple. It's libations and conversations, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we talk about different hot topics. Um, one of the episodes we're talking about, um, the homelessness, um, because it's an epidemic yeah. here in Los yeah. Angeles. And so I had a good friend of mine that come on and we addressed a lot of the issues that have been happening, um, Statewide, uh, I don't know if many people know, but they bust the homeless here from different parts of California and um, Arizona. So we were talking about that, how we could be, you know, of help uh, creating housing places, uh, situations for, you know, the homeless to get them back on the feet, uh, yeah, their sure. feet. Yeah, That's sure. one of the episodes. Yeah. Um, one of the <laughs> Well, that's the thing I don't understand is why they bust them out. I know it's warmer there, but you know, yeah. you think it would. Uh, you think over time the cost of renovating and fixing up all these abandoned houses and all these abandoned buildings, because I know they're all over California, because they're all leaving California and coming to Texas. Uh, yep, they sure are. <laughs> and uh, they're gonna be in for a shock when they get out here and see these property taxes. But uh, either way, they're all they're all moving this way. So there's there's tons of stuff that's like. You know, there's tons of like just in California itself. There's there's so much abandoned stuff that they could be renovating and fixing up and putting people in. You know what's happening is the the gentrification crisis. Yeah. So you have a lot of places, like you yeah. said, um, 
you know, my brother is one of the people that packed up, but he is on the reboot of Walker, Texas Ranger. Oh, wow. And so they, yeah, so they moved to Austin because that's where the show films, but I know that yeah, it's the new Hollywood home, you, right now. There's a lot of stuff going yeah, on in Austin. Yeah, Austin is very Hollywood, but I will say this. Austin has some really great food. They do. Uh, yeah, they do. It's a great food city <laughs> yeah. for sure. We're not that far from uh, Austin. We're like we're, an hour and we're like an hour and a half up the street. Okay, that's really dope. Okay, so Texas, you know, I've, I've been to Dallas a lot. I used to date a guy in Dallas. Uh, uh-huh. I actually have to go to Houston in a couple of weeks, but you guys are kind of like Europe there. Like it's so easy and quick to get to different <laughs> yeah, cities. Okay. Yeah, we can be in different big cities. Yeah, well, there were, what, uh, I think like five of the major or three of the top major cities in the United States are in Texas. That's what people say all the time. You're, you guys are like Europe. Yeah. You know, boy, <laughs> if I had a dollar, <laughs> you'd be wealthy. If I, if I well, had a you're Euro. On your way. You're on your way. You know, mm. you have this amazing podcast, so mm. you're getting there. So I want to um, ask. I want to ask you something, just real quick. Sorry to interrupt you. Yeah. But, but uh, oh no, you're okay. Uh, I'm looking. I'm looking at your podcast, and yeah. uh, you, you you look fantastic on camera, by the way. Thank um, you. But I want to talk about one thing, uh, and that is what the, happened. Oh my god! That is the buttocks behind you. Uh, when you, oh. when you sit there, there is a, there is a butt <laughs> facing me and oh, I, yeah. okay, an anatomy. So my, sis- so my sister-in-law mm-hmm. got me a vase and it is the bottom half <laughs> of the female yeah. the woman anatomy. Yeah, so I saw that. one side is that and then the other side it's the vajayjay but it's covered yeah. with the flower well thank you thank you for facing <laughs> that part towards us we appreciate well that. you know it, it, so it, it reminds me it reminds me of something you would find in an adult bobby hills room that's true that's <laughs> funny no so i will say that shelf in that uh in the shot yeah. is actually curated and designed by my big sister yeah. uh janelle who is an amazing interior designer she did a great so job she, yeah, yeah, she, she, she like put it all together with the photo mm-hmm. And the pompous grass and my candles. Mm-hmm. So yeah, that's all my sister. That's gorgeous. It's gorgeous <laughs> stuff. Yeah. Hey, and I also I want to compliment you on your label design for the candles. Uh, I'm gonna give that credit back to my sister. Well, again, it's just <laughs> you got a good just, sister. You got a great so, sister. It's so simple and classy. You know, I mean, it's just Thank you. it's very nice. Very nice job. Thank you. Thank you. I'm going to give all the credit to my sister because she's that amazing. So, yeah. Shout so out to Janelle. <laughs> I'm going to ask you, uh, yeah, Janelle, uh, I'm going to ask you uh, one other question. How drunk have you gotten on this show before? Oh, my God. We have gotten so drunk. So we have, like, the very <laughs> first episode yeah. is we're talking about different relationships, things, sure. or sexual kinks. So we talk about oh, yeah, talk about BDSM, Excuse me. Uh, pegging. Excuse me, I just choked. Uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, y'all talk about Peggy. We talk about Peggy we, too. No. Peggy. Sure. <laughs> Peggy. Oh, Peggy. Oh, yeah. Shoot. yeah it's... <laughs> look at the, look at the time. That's it's been lovely talking alley. to you. Yeah. yeah. So you know, like I said, like it, it's That's literally great. the the concept of my show. Like I said, I want everybody to be able to come in, get a good laugh sometimes walk away kind of like thinking about sure. your life. Yeah. Um, but for real, it's just us having a great time. And I have so many amazing guests that have come on um, that have just been able to be so raw and real. And yeah. it's not the stereotypical, okay, how did you get into this? Or what is your next project? Or, yeah. you know, like, yeah. you know, yeah. you know, like the basic journalistic questions that you see sure. when you're interviewing your different, you know, celebrities. We, you know, we have, we have kind of that issue here. And, and I think it's just a general podcasting issue that everybody wants to have a conversation about um, the local entrepreneurs or the, the local actors or business people or whatever. And I, it's, it's a wonderful idea, but after a while, you know, I've heard that. Redundant. Yeah, I've heard that same guy's story t- ten times. You know, mm-hmm. and so uh, I think it's great that you kind of break it down and and try to smash some of those taboos and stuff. Yeah, that is. You good. know, it's you know the cool thing is is that I've always been able to like really speak in front of audiences and crowds. Really, even at a younger age. Yeah. 
And just being really relaxed and natural, I think sometimes that people overthink. And if you just go in, take a shot, yeah, have a few drinks, it takes the edge off. Yeah, it does. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> and you have such and I used to model I I would take shots before I would do runway shows. Oh no. Changes the game. Changes the game. Yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure the runway gets a little wobbly. <laughs> I am fierce. That is that is my. <laughs> I my, am fierce. There you go. I like that. I like I am, that. <laughs> yeah, I am fierce, and the runway is my like you know oyster. So it's just like nothing. That's wonderful. But well, you know it's. <clears throat> Well, I'm not a big drinker, but I have a 2016 single malt Islay uh, that uh, I would love to drink on your show. So if you ever need a guest, feel free to hit me up. I'd gladly come and talk Definitely. about uh, pegging. What else was it? Uh, <laughs> BDSM. Now, or, or how about we'll talk about Peggy because my audience is very well aware of my undeniable. So we could talk about Peggy pegging Hank. I I, yes. I think okay. Peggy would want to be. I think she would be into that. Honestly, I think she so too. Would totally be into that. I yeah. think she's the dominant one in the relationship period. She anyway, is. like she is. Uh, yeah, for my personal absolutely. opinion, absolutely. She absolutely is the dom. Because, like, there's one episode where Hank is, like, somebody's, like, dying or something. I can't remember. And then uh, all she could do is worry about, like, somebody making a pass at Hank while somebody was dying. I can't remember what episode that was. But I remember she was so pissed at Hank that he didn't tell her that somebody made a pass at him while somebody was, like, dying. (laughs) Or she was so upset that he didn't tell her that he had to dream about Nancy. Mm, Yeah, there you go. That's it. (laughs) So, Dominique, tell us um, just a, a couple more things, and then we'll let you go. But uh, what what's the end game here? What are you What are you shooting for? You've got this great podcast. Uh, looks like you got some great guests. You have this wonderful candle line. Uh, you, you you've modeled in the past. You've got this journalism degree. What yeah, does what, what does all that add resume. up to? Yeah, <laughs> what does all that add up to? Thank you. Well, first of all, thank you. Um, I, you know, I'm just like you guys, you know, really trying to mm. beef up the streams, become independently owned and operated, yeah. where I am not talking in and out every day. Um, and, you know, like I have amazing friends um, that have very successful podcasting um, careers, mm-hmm. and that is their bread and butter. And I would love to be in that lane as well. Mm-hmm. So, um, you know, just pushing forward, engaging with people, being able to tell people stories, because at the end of the day, we all want to be able to, you know, be able to relate to people yeah. and see the realness in a lot of the things that happen even behind the scenes when it comes to um you know, creating podcasting and content and, mm-hmm. and everything, you know, yeah. um, we're all more alike than we are different. So oh, that's, 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 definitely that's the really truth what it's there. about. The, truth. the human condition <laughs> is very relatable. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I want to be able to wake up every day and, you know, create content and different avenues of my podcast. Um, I was just actually thinking um, about, creating a space for i don't know if you guys watch married at first sight but if you're not mm. watching it you should no you I really don't. Should. Oh, it's it's people cool. that meet it's, each other for the first time and get married right away and they go and really? live their life yeah, together they, they, it is pure they chaos them at the altar. It, pure it is chaos, chaos. Oh. it's pure chaos it's, it's it's great television and so i was like i'm gonna do even like you know like a bonus episode where if you're fans of married at first sight I have this this space for you to come, and we can, you know, talk about it, and you know, let's go yeah. back and forth in the comments. There's like, a lane for everybody say? for everything. It's like, a lane for everybody. Yeah, we never so. thought when we started off with King of the Hill, we originally started with a David Letterman podcast that mm-hmm. had no views, mm-hmm. uh, and then we were like, all right, well, let's let's see what else we could do. So. Uh, we put out this King of the Hill product. And like I said, we've only been doing this, you know, grassroots as possible, zero local support. Uh, uh, Mike and his group here at the uh, Rogue Media Network, uh, they do the phenomenal job of editing and producing and making sure everything gets put out. We got producer Mason back here, our producer that does just a hell of a job. And uh, I don't know, it's just been crazy to think that in eight months we've been able to do what we do. But it, all it is is engagement. And that's what I've, like I yeah. drive is engagement. And that's what I tell anybody that asks me for advice. Because there's people that have been doing podcasts for years now that have zero traction. And they're asking me like, well, what are you doing that's different than what I'm doing? I've been doing it all this time. And you've only been, you know, you and Mike have only been doing this particular podcast for X amount of time. And all it is really, it is 
complete engagement. Mm. I talk to yeah. I talk to people that are fans of King of the Hill. Uh, really, like I leave, I, I write my podcast link. I'll write it on the receipts when when I leave a restaurant. I have to sign a receipt. <laughs> I'll leave it on there. <laughs> Uh, I mean, it's completely that is guerrilla marketing and utterly yeah. shameless. Yeah. I talk about if I hear somebody in public mention the show King of the Hill, or if I hear the words King of the Hill, it don't even got to be King of the Hill. It could be they could be talking about anything, and I'm like, oh, King of the Hill, you're a King of the Hill fan. If well, they I got say, a King of the Hill if they podcast. say the words King or of or the, you or know, Hill. he's he's on. I'm yeah. 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 he's on. I'm listening in public. <laughs> I mean, I'm 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 I don't see it as. Uh, a, a pet project and I'm having fun doing, I'm having fun yeah. doing it, right. but I'm treating sure. it like it's a, like it's, it's a job. It, it, like yeah. it's something that I, and yeah. you know, so it's something that I want to do, you know, cause I'd rather do this all day than punch a time clock for somebody. Absolutely. Uh, you know. Well, you know, we talked about, uh, I think Dominique brought up the fact that we're all more alike than we are different. Mm-hmm. I think it's the guys that uh, want us to punch that time clock are the ones that, that push that narrative. Yeah. you know, to keep us apart. Yeah, the, they push um, it. They push it so yeah. heavily. The nine to five narrative, yeah. they, they yeah. push it so, so heavily. And it's like, uh, you know, and this is what I tell all employers, if you want loyalty, buy a dog. Yeah. Because I'm, <laughs> and, and I'm here for thing. a paycheck, not and, for loyalty. Exactly. And, and I don't want to get any of your listener for anybody that's listening on, like, we're not knocking the nine to five hustle. We're no, we're not. Not, not at all. Because I'm, in not, the, I'm still attached we, to the nine to five hustle. So I'm definitely not knocking at all. This is a, this is yes. the, 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 what this is, is showing you that you could do what we're doing if that's what you want to do or whatever it is yes. that you want to do. I'm 32 years old. I started a podcast at last year at 31. So or this year, you know, before at the beginning of the year. Uh, so it's like. If you want to go do something, go do it. Don't wait because now's the best time to go do it. Yeah, you know? never, don't wait till never tomorrow. Wait. Don't say, "Hey, well, I'll, I'll start it tomorrow." No, start it now. It's not hard, yeah. you know. Yeah. And, and and I'm gonna be very transparent. Like I've had several podcasts in the past, and you know, like different things happen because I've had you know, like the same co-host or like I had one with one of my best friends. Mm-hmm. I had one with my sister. Yeah, it's mm-hmm. tough. And it's so, hard. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. It, and it gets tough. And it, you know, I have one with a group of girlfriends, and you know, so it's a literally, it's literally about like staying on, staying the course, right? And it I is. knew that I still wanted to do something, and. I have been lagging on it. And even now listening to you, I had a meeting where they wanted me to spend like $7,800, not $78, $7,800, which is closer to $10,000. Yeah, that's a lot of bread. To give me, and and some of the advice that he gave me is literally what you said, like, hey, go do this and go on to people's posts, like search certain keywords. Oh, what does your target audience look like? Yeah, you know, well, I need to know where I could like sign up for that job because I've got a s- tons of advice and I've only been doing it eight months <laughs> and I've got a lot of advice that I could give. Well, people I think that's worked for uh, me. Dominique, I think that's like anything else. You know, you're, you're always going to find those people out there that uh, pretend to know how you can make your life better through whatever it is, right? But you know what's even worse about that, though? You know what's even worse about that, Mike, Mm. is that there are people that will pay and listen to those people. No, I get it. I get it. That's the problem. (laughs) But, well, but what I'm saying is there's there's always going to be those snake oil salesmen out there, Yeah, well, that's the way I see it is if you put that guy on a street corner in raggedy clothes. That's it. It's Thatherton. It's Thatherton. Good good job. (laughs) Look at that. She yeah. pulled it all the way back. Yeah, Good job. Awesome. Yeah, man. I just, I, I just, I, you know, the, the thing that I preach is consistency. Um, yeah. You know, it's, it. it's consistency. That's, that's really all it is. You, if you can outlast everybody else, you win. I mean, that's, that's just the way it works. And right now. So like I did all the research for the King of the Hill podcast, like right as we were starting it and everybody pretty much fell off. There's one that made it to around season five, but the bulk of them made it to about season three. And that's where they stopped about midway through season three. Cause it's a, Uh, it's, it's, it's mm -hmm. a trick. It is. You got to think for season two, we'll be in season two for 25 weeks. Mm Mm-hmm. Yep. Or season three, sorry. We season just started three. season yeah. three. So we'll be in season three for 25 weeks yeah. before we make it to season four. That's half. That's like half of a year of podcasts. It. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, it's, but here's it's the cool that, that uphill that. battle. It's hard for people. It's, it's, Kevin on stage said it best, and I don't know um, if anybody knows uh, who he is, but he's an amazing content creator, comic. Uh, one of my best friends is on tour with him right now, but... He de- developed his own app. He has a master class as well. Yeah, I know who you're talking about. Yeah, I know exactly who you're so talking Ke- 
have um, said it that, you know, you would have to put out at least a hundred episodes before really anybody starts to really yep. kind of listen or pick up what you're doing. And he was like, half of the podcast that we know don't make it past that. Yep. So it's like you being able to be consistent and push yeah. forward. And you guys have a cheat code. One, you have, <laughs> you know, you, you know, you got searching King of the Hill everywhere and being able to penetrate those areas. But two, you have a template because you have episodes, whereas yeah. sometimes it's hard for people to, it is. what am I going to talk about this week? You know, I, I make episodes out of everything, like certain conversations. I had a girlfriend say, okay, so when are you going to call me to put me on so we can talk about it? I'm like, thank you, friends. That's good. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, that's great. You, you've, conditioned, when, you've conditioned your friends to be writers for your show. They know. They are already <laughs> aware. They know. Like um, the upcoming episode, I'm interviewing um, another comic uh, slash creator, and we were having a, a real honest conversation um, and my messages based on a live that I was featured on. And he was saying, I don't think that the person was understanding because what I took away was this. And what he was saying, so we had a really open and honest conversation just about men and women really being able to communicate. Yeah. You know, there's all these different avenues and, 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 and conversations that are happening. Women don't listen. They're not accountable. And men are not, you know, emotional. And we need this from you guys. And it's just like, why are why are we talking to other people about this and we're not talking to each other? Like, why? how are you just talking to men about this? And how are you just talking to women? How yeah. about we talk together? You know, absolutely. there's absolutely. a show. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I think you're absolutely right. You know, the the I heard somewhere the national average on pod fade, which I, I, I love that term it just means you fade out of doing your podcast. Uh, the national average is eight episodes. And so wow. people, yep. people will get through eight episodes and then they'll go, well, you know, I got something to do this week or I'm going to take a break or I'm going to do this. And it just doesn't work. Hey, I'm, hey, I'm yeah. guilty of it too. I started yeah. a podcast yeah. uh, this year, another podcast this year I started too called Video Games Are For Losers. And it's kind of shelved. It's not dead, but it's a, a video game podcast, but also a uh, men's mental health awareness kind of mm -hmm. thing tied into yeah. it so i get like people in the video game sphere whether it be collectors or content creators or something like that and then at the end of the show after we talk about video games or whatever it is that they're like you know content they create or whatever they're known for or whatever and then at the very end i i, I ask them i said well you know now that you've done all this in the video game world and you've made x amount of money uh how do you feel about all the people that called you a loser for playing video games when you were a kid? So I kind of tied that in at the end, but <laughs> you know, there's a lot of things that go on in life and it's really hard to maintain the consistency that is needed to uh, get a good, uh, get a good following. And that's really what's helped me and Mike is that me and him, no matter whether, you know, he's had to go out of town for a weekend or I've had to miss a day or something like that. We've always came up with a way to, uh, mitigate that, you know, potential disaster. Like, mm -hmm. so our very first one really wasn't that far into recording where we had to re-release the first episode. And that's what we were thinking. Like, well, what do we do? And I was like, well, we just re-released no, the first I, episode. I forgot all about that. Yeah. 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 And, and then we had another hiccup and it was like, well, what do we do now? Uh, well, we had an interview with a TikTok guy that does all the Hank Hill raps, Hank Trill. Yeah. So we were like, <laughs> We'll just re-release that one because that's a good one to market. That's easily to, it's an easy you know freebie to market kind of thing, you know. So so Dominique, you know, I want to I, I want to thank you for being here. Yeah, so much. Um, we appreciate it. Uh, yeah, you, you there is, and and I wanted to say this: there is absolutely no shame in having started several projects and refining them to get to the one that you're supposed to do. I've probably, yeah. I've probably done 12, 15 different shows. Right. And, you know, at some point it's the reliability of others or it's a consistency issue or just life gets in the way, you know, it just happens. And so this is where I'm supposed to be doing this show. Now you are where you're supposed to be making your candles, making your podcast, and uh, we're going to support each other. And I, I can't thank yeah. you. I can't thank you enough for being here. I'm I'm just happy that you guys gave me the opportunity. I was I mean when I got the tweet, I was just like, oh my god! And literally, I watch King of the Hill every every day. Yeah. You know, I you know we talk about mental health. I have anxiety, um, yeah. suffer from depression from time to time. But and they sure. say one of the things that helps you is to watch something 
that you know how it's going to end. King of the Hill. That makes, we know how it's that makes end. total it sense. Has, that makes total sense. Right? Yeah. Right? And so it makes I, me I feel better when of, I watch it. It was so right. And so I was telling my mom, you know, we like to partake in things and have a great time. And I'm like, yo, you have to, to watch King of the Hill season six, episode one. And, you know, Bobby goes to town. Um, well, he, he has to eat the dirt, you know, because he's getting hung <laughs> hey, by yeah, yeah, yeah. Hang with on, with on and his posse, yeah. right? And, you know, Hank is telling him that I can't always defend you. You need to go take a self-defense class. Mm -hmm. And it turns into this whole epic episode with, you know, Pamela Alden will go on to win an Emmy for voice yeah. and Bobby, yeah. Yeah. you know, so yeah, it's, just, it's just great. And I just, there's a lot I of Emmy award King winners from that show. They, that, that, that show had a lot of, a lot of different Emmys attached to it when it comes to writers, animation, direction, everything. It was really, really, everything. just a really well done show. And I think what's really great about your podcast, you give us like tidbits that we might not have known. Like I didn't know that John Redcorn was initially voiced by the guy that played in Crazy Horse. Oh yeah. And yeah, then yeah. would change into someone else because he passed away. Right. You know, or, and, and for or, a lot of that, I didn't like a lot of this stuff. Uh, I watch these episodes now. I watch one episode a week, but I watch it all week. So I'm, I watched the episode that we're going to, that, that, that we, we talked about on our, our Monday episode. I've probably watched it, you know, probably, three times a day for the last, you know, seven days, six days. So it, it we get stuff out of it because of how much we have to watch. And it. that's, that's from a new book. Right. That he, that's from a new book that Rusty's putting out called how to be a sociopath. Yeah. So that wow. uh, look, look for that uh, on your, on your shelves soon. Um, yeah, well, that's crazy. Dominic, thank you so much for being here. And thank uh, you so I much wanna, for having me. I want to send everybody to S A I N T dash dash. A N G E L E S dot com, Saint Angeles dot com. That is official uh, sponsor look, of the block. Yeah, the look at yes. look at her beautiful and I'm assuming smelling great candles. Uh, and uh, go go buy a couple of candles. Support a small creator. Go. I have free shipping right now. There you go. Free there shipping. You go. Free shipping right now. Free and then and right uh, we will have a code for you guys eventually oh, once awesome. everything's set up. Yeah. She's going to set up a code. Yeah. That way we could uh, track yeah. some measurables and I stuff like that. I wonder what it's going to be. Uh, yeah, I wonder what it's going to be too. <laughs> hey, uh, also, also, I want to encourage anybody that's listening to go to YouTube.com and look up St. Angeles, uh, S-A-I-N-T-A-N-G-E-L-E-S, and check out her podcast. Uh, whiskey, um, yeah, whiskey soured. Uh, and, yeah, you could. Uh, so the quickest way to get to it, because yeah. I believe that is just my my YouTube page. I mm -hmm. think my maybe, or you might know more than me. So no. correct me if I'm wrong. Go for but it. that might be my actual name. I think YouTube created like a space where you can do handles now. They do, yeah, yeah. But so I can't remember if I changed mine yet. But you if did. I did, great. You did. Okay, yeah, it's, and there, it's and there Saint you Angeles. Go. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's wonderful. <laughs> wonderful. <laughs> Well, Dominique, thank you. So, yeah, you. that's how you can find me, yeah. Thank you once again, and, and keep at the struggle there. And uh, anytime, you need, uh, anytime you need guests, you, you hit us up. Oh, I can't wait to have you on. It's going to be such a great time. Cool. Yeah, we can't wait. <laughs> All, right. All right, you guys, take care. Thank Absolutely. you. Absolutely, you too. Take thank you so much. You have a great afternoon. Bye-bye. Bye. Well, Rusty, that was fantastic. That was great. Uh, yeah, that she was great. Is, uh, she's out there hustling. She's making candles. She's... Uh, a model. She's got uh, broadcast journalism in her background. I mean, she's good our God. first official small business sponsorship. Yeah. Uh, so we're looking forward to talking about her candles and getting to try them out. We're looking for all those people from uh, uh, St. Louis and Los Angeles. That's yeah. that's all we need. Just, all we just need. everyone in St. Louis and Los Angeles. That'll do. Yeah, yeah we'll take it. We're, we're trying to keep it small. Uh, so thank you guys for listening once again. Happy Friday. And Rusty, where can they find us? They can find us at B-W-A-A-A-K-O-T-H on Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter. And uh, Twitter. I'm, I've been, you know, we've been killing it, Mike. We've been doing great. So Twitter, tell me, dumpster fire right now or what? Oh, it's great. Really? I wouldn't call it a, a dumpster fire. Uh, everybody's in an uproar about all the Elon Musk stuff. Yeah, but I mean, saying, it's yeah. just... Uh, 
I wouldn't call it a dumpster fire. Everybody's just whining and pissing I, and moaning that I they're going to leave because he's changing a lot of the, the, the verification rules. So now you have to be like a notable figure to be yeah. verified. Well, he's going to turn it into an $8 subscription Eight fee. Eight bucks. Yep. So Eight you're going to have a lot of blue check marks, a lot of verified people that can now message these celebrities and yeah. stuff like that without having that wall in front of them. Because mm-hmm. there's, a mm-hmm. you know, like to, to message a blue check on Twitter – you know, a lot of blogging I, people you can't message because you I don't will have not. One. I will not say I am a huge Elon Musk fan or anything because I just don't know enough about him. Uh, but I don't really. Yeah. I will say that I think in this time and uh, in history that any publicity is almost good publicity. <laughs> so yeah, yeah. I think he is a master of that. So uh, check us out online, and uh, you can always get us at RogueMediaNetwork.com. And we thank you guys for listening. We met Tanya. We met Tanya. This has been a Rogue Media Podcast.